discuss more on kidnappings and banditry in Nigeria, we're being joined by the Executive Director Network of Civil Society in Borno State, and that's uh, Bulama Abisu. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much for coming on. Now, beyond the immediate violence, what do you see as the underlying, uh, underlining uh, cons curses or uh, contributing factors of banditry and kidnapping in Nigeria? Thank you very much once again. I, I want to uh, believe that um, this situation is very dicey and um, let me uh, congratulate the parents that were able to get their uh, words back. And um, the underlying factor is, uh, is multifaceted, I can say. One, um, the economic aspect of the country is also another angle where you can see a parent or any person cannot be able to actually provide for its own home. Secondly, the issue of trust is also another issue that actually degenerated into a lot of serious issues where a small thing between one community and other or between one religion and other will degenerate into violence such that uh, you cannot be able to even control. Thirdly, uh, you can see suspicion between the ethnic groups in the country, where even at the larger angle of uh, uh, our, our political divide, you will see uh, a group that went to this uh, city or state that were rejected and that were asked to know to this is not your own land and what have you. So these are some of the compounding issues that uh, need to actually look at beyond uh, the kinetic beyond the aggressive security issues that we are facing. Hmm. Now, th we understand that the security forces, uh, to an extent, have struggled to contain these groups. Um, what specific reforms, uh, in terms of, you know, to, that is necessary to improve their effectiveness and accountability, what are some reforms that you think uh, you would prefer in terms of solutions to up their game in tackling uh, banditry and insecurity? Yeah, um, uh, one major issue is uh, is a quick review of what are they doing. Though they may not be able to be open for the public to discuss it, but they will have the confidence of bringing experts to see what exactly are the securities doing on ground. Is it actually bringing in uh, any good results? Or where does it need uh, for any review in that respect? First, you must find out within the security forces to see that. Secondly, we all talk technology everywhere. Now I am talking to you via, uh, based on the technology. And you can find exactly, even if you want, where am I speaking with you? So therefore, I think there is, we are missing something from the use of our technology on ground. Why can't we use this technology very much such that a one call, a single call, will be enough for us to detect where and how these people are doing it. Thirdly, we need to actually uh, get a robust community engagement. These people are not coming from the thin air. They are going somewhere. A huge number of human beings, a huge number of cattle sometimes, 100, 200 people will be moved from one place to another. And for the period of even a year, one cannot be able to find out. I think we need to reverse that. We need to look at this and check out. Probably the community are not also given back, maybe because the securities are not actually uh, given them uh, open space for them to do that. So we need to actually look at our uh, community engagement, sit down with the communities, and then discuss very well in this regard. So I believe if we can be able to look at the technology angle of it, look at the community engagement uh, so that communities can be able to give information accurate and uh, information, I think we can uh, make a lot of positive uh, move in that regard. I mean, a lot can be said about community contributing when it comes to intelligence and helping uh, security agencies. There's a, there's a factor of fear, you know, there's a factor of trust there. Um, mm, but yeah. let's, let's take a look at uh, 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 young people as well. Um, we understand that yeah. many perpetrators of this crime are also young people um, with limited yeah. opportunities. What role yeah. can civil society play in creating alternative uh, livelihoods and reducing the appeal 
of, of banditry? Yeah, I think um, uh, this is a very, very good question. Uh, we all know the issue of young employment in the country is, is, is has reached a peak where the government alone cannot be able to contain uh, the situation. This is only talking about those who are even employable. Then there are those who have not gotten the prerequisite for them to be employed, are all also roaming about in the, in, in the street. So there is the need, uh, a strong collaboration between the government, CSOs, and private sectors. The CSOs are trying their best, but in most cases, very, very limited. Where we are now is issue of peace building is there, where CSOs have actually gone into communities, pick youths, and then uh, align them to be ambassadors of peace in their own community. But how many, how many of them can a CSO take? So there is the need, the government, the international community to come in. These fine ideas should be looked into. There are a lot of fine, fine ideas by, by, by the CSOs. Maybe an international workshop on this can be called by the government to tap into this. And then how will they going to um, 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 sponsor some of these programs to go down in that regard? So I think engaging the youth positively is one key aspect where we can be able to uh, uh, bring uh, sanity to our community and also reduce these youths from joining these bad groups in the community. So I believe the CSOs have a lot to offer and um, if the opportunity is given, if supports are given, if resources are full, we can be able to actually reduce in great numbers the issue of unemployment in the country so that youths can be productive in their activities. I mean, we saw a video circulating on social media where an alleged bandit or kidnapper, we don't know his identity for sure, was lying down on bundles of uh, Naira notes. And it was just uh, bizarre to see that. And that really will transmit or just, uh, you know, transfer some, some sort of negative connotation to somebody who is also leaning towards that. But away from CSO, you know, uh, cooperation and, you know, and a collective initiative, in tackling this and engaging the youths positively. Do you think there's a role for international cooperation with you know, countries that are bordering around Nigeria and addressing this? Uh, say, for example, uh, Niger and uh, every other country that we share border with, and we see that many of these routes are used when it comes to proliferation of small arms. Yes, I, I think you are right in this direction. Uh, there is the need for us to scrutinize the policies that are on the ground first. And then um, look at um, uh, areas of uh, collaboration. Then look at areas. There are a lot of uh, suspicion in some of the activities of even international organizations, international, even the countries themselves. We need to actually sit down and scrutinize all uh, our policies in that regard. Then sit down and then uh, seek for cooperation. We should not undermine any country that is bothering us whether big, small, whether they have the economic capacity or not, we sit down and then discuss fully. These are issues when left, it can spread to everywhere. So therefore, there is the need for cooperation between uh, all our communities, then uh, also reaching out to the international communities for best practices within these communities. We will not undermine uh, our communities, if they, are, uh, if they are peaceful within their own community, what makes them to remain peaceful? There is the need for us to go and see. We have seen other countries coming to us uh, uh, for, for lesson learning, and um, they come and learn and then go. I have not actually yet to see uh, us going out to learn lessons from other countries. Uh, are we uh, saying that we are giants of Africa, we cannot actually go out and get any support from somewhere and what have you. So I want to believe through this cooperation, through this uh, pair learning, we can be able to exchange ideas and see and then pick the one that will be very much uh, good for us. The issue of our borders are also uh, another angle to it. We cannot be able to bend the whole of the borders. So therefore, cooperation is the only thing that can bring about, uh, uh, bring us 
to a table where we can be able to discuss and find solutions to these issues on the ground. Ulama Abisu there talking to me about the issue of banditry and kidnapping in Nigeria, as well as insecurity and the way forward. Many thanks for coming on. We appreciate you for doing this with us. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure talking to you.